it, you know, it all kind of varies upon the season. Um, we get some local cheeses. We have two cheese suppliers that are local, uh, the Goat Ladies Goat Cheese and Piemonte Cheese Farms, which is out of uh, Gibsonville area. Um, when it comes to produce, uh, it's unfortunate, but the best time to get our good produce is when Elon's gone. So the summer months, the spring and the summer months when everybody's leaving is when the produce blossom really hits here in this area. So I work with four, three to four local vendors for my produce. Clay being, Clay and uh, Nancy from Redbud being the number one um, producer for us. And then we have another gentleman who does nothing but basil for us. Um, so during the summer months, he will, whew, he'll probably bring us 50 pounds of basil a week. Um, so then we'll take each week we'll take that basil and we'll, we'll make pesto out of it. Uh, we'll make it very uh, concentrated and not add the cheese though. And then we'll freeze it and that way we can use fresh local basil um, throughout the rest of the school year um, when we can't get basil. Otherwise, I, I remember when we first opened, I was buying my basil and it was coming from Columbia, South America. Um, and I was like, where's this transparency? You know, how is this costing $10 when it has to get flown all the way? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and then we have uh, a couple other local farmers. One, she's a shiitake mushroom grower, um, and she brings us shiitake mushrooms whenever we use those for specials, so on and so forth. So. And why do you guys feel there's a, there's a need to buy local? Because you were talking about getting it from other places. Maybe it's more cost-effective to do that. Why, why focus There's on really that? no transparency. Um, so, I mean, everything you look at, I know where it came from. I've been to Clay and Nancy's farm. I've walked through the farm, I can really tell you as a consumer where that butternut squash is coming from for your butternut squash soup, or you know where your cherry tomatoes are coming from. That's just on a simple house salad. And I think that's really the beauty of it. Um, you know, it's also Clay and Nancy coming, they frequent my establishment. So I'm putting money in the community and they put that money back into my pocket, which is going right back into the community. So it's all just cyclical, putting it back in. Correct. And it, tastes much better. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> definitely true. I can attest to that. The pandor was special. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about your background and how you became, are you just the owners of Fat Frog? And so I co-own both the Fat Frog and Pandora's Pies with uh, Jeff McKenzie. He graduated Elon in 78 um, and I graduated in 2009. He was my landlord when I was in college for my junior and senior year. And uh, he, he, when he opened up the Fat Frog, he, he really had zero uh, restaurant background. Um, I had worked in food and beverage since I was 14. And uh, he was a general contractor, so he was able to upfit the whole place, which saved us a lot of money. And he let me be his general manager from day one. Uh, I worked for free uh, to gain sweat equity for those first two years. And that's how we became partners. And then he also helped me financially open up Pandora Spies. And so we're co-owners of each. Um, you know, yeah, you know, each year's grown and grown, but Elon's also grown and grown, so I, I think that's a good um, spectrum to look at it through. Uh, our growth has grown each year, but I think a lot of it's due in part with the growth of Elon. When I graduated from Elon, there was only one restaurant off campus. Uh, it was Skids. Skids was the only restaurant that you could go eat off that wasn't owned by Aramark when I graduated. So there was a big void and you know Chris Brumbaugh at the root he's a good friend of mine you know he filled some of that void I filled some of that void and right now what's really cool is everybody that's opening up is doing something different so we're we're you know creating a lot of good scenes but no one's really stepping on each other's toes in terms of creativity and competition competition's great as long as people are doing different things and, and that's been great and it's shown well in the Elon community what would you say is the main um, you know, like I said, I don't really don't, I don't foresee that, you know, I mean, uh, we all offer different things that people want at different times, you know, um, when I graduated from Elon, the only, the only pizza place was Domino's, you know, and I don't see myself in Domino's as competition, but it's a college town without a cool little pickup, little pizza joint. So, I mean, that was a definite need in the town. Um, and another thing that, you know, a lot of students don't see is, the amount of community support that we get for both businesses. Fat Frog runs on roughly 60% local. 
Um, 60% of my business is local where Pandora's it's more 50-50 split that I can really see during the summer times and I can see those numbers. But we really do a, a lot of stuff with the community here at the Fat for All and Pandora's Pies and, and that accounts for a lot of our business also. It seems like there would be a, a very big challenge once school season gets out. Has that been any factor really? Because you talk about having that local support. but You do. I mean, like I said, business slows down. I mean, think about how many faculty and staff aren't coming back to campus because they're aren't needed, you know, as many people because when students are here, summer school's almost obsolete. It's all done online. Um, but like I said, uh, it's a season that you just are prepared for and you get a little breathing room as well and get to cater to your local community. I just had a couple more questions. Courtney had a few of them. We'll yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, and it was just with kind of your experience um, co-owning both. And then you mentioned how you had a two-year gap tried to, you got more and more equity in those stakes, um, and I was just curious, why did you enter this this space? Because I've heard several times from different food establishments that's very difficult to try and crack a living in the food industry. Yeah, the food industry is not easy. Um, I was an entrepreneurship major, so, uh, you know, it's one thing that's in your blood is, is if you want to, you know, take on a challenge and take a risk. Um, I think I've always had that. Uh, the other thing too is if you go into the food and beverage industry thinking that all we're going to do, like I said earlier, is cater to college students, so on and so forth, you are going to fail. You, like I said, you have to look at the community and you have to want to build a community. If you can become a cornerstone in your community, then your business will succeed. So you have to look at it in terms of growth of the community as a whole, not just your one establishment. Um, you know, the other cool thing is the food and beverage industry, like you get to meet different people every day. Sometimes you're a psychologist because you're behind the bar helping people. Um, you, know, I, you know, the other cool thing is I get, I've made so many close friends with students that have come and gone throughout the years um, that, you know, I still talk to all the time and they reach out to me and, thank me for what I've helped them with, whether it was just them coming to the bar and saying, hey, I got these two job opportunities, what do you think? You know, and, and that, that's awesome to be in this community and be a cornerstone for all those people. And like I said, if you focus on doing that, your business will succeed. Our article's focus is going to be on going local. And I was, my final question was, what does going local, being local mean to you? Um, going local, like I told you, everything's transparent. You can see where it comes from. Um, is that 100% possible in this business? No. Um, is it getting easier? Yes. Uh, so I think going local for means, you know, for me means having a transparency between what you have, what you sell, and where it came from. And like I said, it's not easy, but it's getting easier, which is great to see. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think they do. Um, a lot of times it's an education process as well. So once you're able to educate your consumer um, how much better local grass-fed beef is on a burger versus, you know, still good Angus ground chuck, um, then, you know, after that education process takes place and they try it and they see it, then I think they definitely start gravitating it to it more and more often. Um, especially with like beer, for example. And Pandora's, all we do is offer North Carolina beer on draft. And North Carolina beers are kicking ass compared to a lot of the West Coast breweries out there that have been the main staple for such a long period of time. So it's, you know, it's good to see that people are coming back and respecting that and, and looking for it. And can you list some of the items that you buy local other than Yeah. Yeah. Um, all our deli meats at Pandora's Pies are from a local um, delicatessen called San Giuseppe Salamis. Um, and that's right up the street in North Carolina, and he uses all natural products. So uh, if we have smoked turkey, smoked chicken, pepperoni, soprasata, um, all those come from him locally. Uh, like I said, all of my produ produce, when in season, we get locally. So cucumbers, green peppers, uh, tomatoes, so on and so forth, all come locally. Um, 
you know, the other cool thing is a lot of times we're able to meet with farmers and our farmers, we can tell our farmers what we're looking at doing six months ahead of time. So then they'll, they're able to forecast and produce X number amount of items that we may need for the next year. Um, another couple, uh, the bread shop out of Pittsburgh produces all our bread at Pandora's. They also do the bread for um, the root and for uh, fat frog if we're not baking it in a house at Pandora's. Um, Simple Needs produces all of our gluten-free products, um, and they're out of Burlington as well. Uh, and then, like I said, most of it, a lot of it's specialty item stuff that we get locally. We used to get our flour locally for Pandora's, but the uh, gluten consistency wasn't uh, what we really needed for our pizza dough. So, like I said, you know, some things are a necessity to buy from mainstream locations um, and others aren't. And, you know, I think I haven't seen an issue with passing the price down if it is more expensive to have something local. Like I said, it's also give people the option. So, like, 